Okay, here is the um, adjusting my camera yet again. The second of several video lectures on uh, humanistic psychological theories as they pertain to personality development. Um, again, you you have a series of needs that 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 you, and as you climb the pyramid, you can't go from one level to the next without completing the needs from the previous level. Um, I've mentioned before the physiological needs are the very basic, the breathing, food, water, sleep, sex, etc. Safety needs are next. This, these needs deal with security of your body, personal safety, employment, job, maybe school, uh, morality, family, health, and property. Uh, once you have these secured, then you move up to the love and belonging needs, friendships, family. Uh, intimate relationships with other people, sexual intimacy, uh, spouse. Um, once you fulfill these needs, then you can move up to the esteem needs, which deal with self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of others, and respect by others. Most of us don't get to the very top, according to Maslow. Um, at the very top of this pyramid, you have what's called self-actualization. This is when a person reaches his or her his or her full potential in life. I don't think any of us probably can say that we have absolutely have reached or will reach our full potential, but maybe some have. Uh, some speculate that, that individuals like Eleanor Roosevelt or Abraham Lincoln, for example, have or Winston Churchill have reached their full potential in life. Uh, we're talking about morality, creativity, spontaneity, problem solving, lack of prejudice, acceptance of facts, objectivity. Um, this is something that we that we aspire to um, at the very top of the, of the pyramid. I'm going to skip through these. You don't need to really know these. So, pertaining to the overall characteristics of needs, the lower the need is in the hierarchy, the greater its strength, potency, and priority. So these are all good things to have in your notes. Uh, higher needs will appear later in life. Physiological and safety needs arise during infancy because we are de wholly dependent upon our caregivers uh, at that point in time during our life. Uh, belongingness and esteem needs generally arise during adolescence um, when we're looking to be a part of a group, to be accepted, and our self-esteem is largely contingent upon how we feel others view us or what others think about us. The need for self-actualizing doesn't arise until the middle of life. So this is kind of how these needs work according to Maslow. And certainly our personalities develop in accordance with, with how we fulfill or don't fulfill these needs. Now because higher needs are less necessary for actual survival, we can gratify, or rather we can postpone the gratification of these needs. You don't have to have good self-esteem or high self-esteem to live, to survive, but you do need food and water. So those higher needs are less necessary to actually survive, so we can put those off. Failure to satisfy higher needs does not necessarily produce a crisis. So if you don't ever achieve self-actualizing characteristics like self-esteem, um, objectivity, lack of prejudice, for example, not necessarily a crisis situation. However, failure to satisfy these lower needs does produce these crises. Um, and the lower needs are collectively referred to for this reason as the deficit or deficiency needs. It's important to know. Although the higher needs are less necessary for survival, they contribute to personal growth. Satisfaction of these higher needs leads to improved health, happiness, contentment, fulfillment, longevity. And these higher needs are subsequently referred to collectively as the growth or being needs. Uh, there's research that, that shows that you know, people uh, who are happier, who are content, um, who have greater self-esteem, uh, they, um, they are happier, healthier individuals. Um, gratification of the higher needs requires better external social circumstances, economic circumstances, and political circumstances than does the gratification of the lower needs. So simply, if you are born into an environment, a social or physical environment that does not give you opportunities to, to go to good schools or to be nurtured or to be exposed to nourishing and healthy components of life, um, then your chances of, of gratifying those higher needs goes way down. Um, and that's just a simple fact. So sometimes just being lucky enough to be 
to be born into a, a good, positive, nurturing environment makes a difference in whether or not a person will achieve these higher level needs or not. Um, a need does not have to be satisfied fully before the next need in the hierarchy becomes important. Actually, I had said earlier that you have to satisfy all the needs before you move on. Um, that was the early thought. That was the early assertion with this theory. Uh, that's been modified over time now to to reflect the following. For example, a person can have 80% physiological needs, 70% safety needs, 40% belongingness, and 30% esteem, and 10% of the self-actualized need, um, and still be relatively healthy. So the idea that you have to have meet all criteria for one level to move on to the next has actually kind of been changed and modified over time. So the humanistic approach to psychology is represented largely by the works of Maslow and Rogers. Their theories emphasize, again, this is a review slide, human strengths and aspirations, conscious free will, fulfillment of human potential, a flattering and optimistic image of human nature, the idea that we are all active, creative people or beings, and the fact that we are concerned with growth, personal growth, and self-actualization. Let's call that the end of this part of things.